Today I'm going to look at the contrast only filter found in Nick Color Effects. We're going to take a deep dive into it and see what it's all about and how it can help us in our editing process. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today I want to take a look at another one of the contrast filters found in Nick Color Effects Pro. Now, Color Effects has like four different contrast filters. I want to look at each and every one of them. And today I wanted to take a close look at the contrast only filter. This is a great filter. Today I'm working with this stock image. Now, I really like it. It has a nice, hazy, soft look. But for my taste, it's lacking a little bit of contrast. It looks a little bit too dull. So I'd like to bring a little bit of contrast back to it. I really like its subdued color. And I like the softness of the image. Now, the contrast only filter will help us in two areas. It'll help us to bring contrast to this image, not too much, but I also want to maintain a soft look and I don't want to bring extra saturation into the image. And that is where the contrast only filter will really come into play, as you'll see here very shortly. Well, let's dive right in. I have the Nick Selective tool opened up here. I even made myself an action for my TK8, my actions panel, so I can launch it very quickly. So if I X out of this thing and just click this button right here, it comes right up. Now, if you don't have the TK8, my actions panel, or you don't have that action made yet, you can come right up to file under automate and you'll find the Nick selective tool right here. Now it opens up by default, but you can shut it off. I shut mine off because I don't use the Nick collection all the time, only when I need it. And I don't want that uh, selective tool coming up every time. It kind of gets annoying. So I made mine not come on by default. So I can launch it either way from file or from my, my actions panel. I'll go ahead and open it back up. Now, one thing I love about the selective tool is you can favorite presets and filters for all the different uh, apps found inside of the Nick Collection 5. Anytime you star or favorite a filter, it'll show up in a list here. Now, contrast only is right here. So now all I have to do is click contrast only. It'll open up Color Effects Pro 5 and that filter will be right there ready to be used. So I'll go ahead and click contrast only and we'll get started. Now here we are inside of Color Effects Pro 5. If you have older versions of Color Effects Pro, uh, even the Google edition, if it still works for you, you'll have this filter in there as well. Let's take a look at these different sliders and what we can do with them. Let me go ahead and refer to the uh, user's guide. Now last week I showed you Pro Contrast which is a wonderful filter. And thanks for all your comments. And please comment and ask questions. I really want to hear from you. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon and you'll never miss a new tutorial. And if you enjoy my content, please give it a like, share it with your friends. I really appreciate that. Now we're going to look at contrast only. So let's see what it can do. This filter provides various controls for contrast, including the contrast only method, which adjusts contrast without changing the color of the objects in the photo. And that's its strong suit, but that's not all it can do. Now there's a brightness adjustment, which controls the overall brightness of the image and a standard contrast adjustment for just standard contrast. Now remember standard contrast always induces extra saturation in your image, but that's what this filter is all about. If you use the next adjustment, contrast only, it applies contrast without changing colors. But here's another one of my favorites, soft contrast. And remember this image that we're working on has a nice dreamy soft look to it. But this soft contrast provides a softer alternative to the usual contrast. Move this slider to the right to create a contrast that gives character to the image with smooth transitions between areas. Saturation, you may want a little extra saturation, but the nice thing about the saturation slider is you can add as much saturation or take saturation away, which is nice, but you can't do that with a regular contrast adjustment. You're going to get that saturation. I mean, after the fact, you can pull saturation down. I'm not, not saying you can't do that, but we can do it all right here in this one filter. And lastly, we can adjust shadows and highlights. If we're blocking up shadows or blowing out highlights, we can add highlight and shadow protection. 
Now that we have a really good understanding of what this filter can do, let's see how it can help this image. I want to get a little extra contrast in this image. I don't want to increase the saturation and I want to maintain the soft dreamy look. So let's see how this filter can help us. Now by default, contrast only is set to 50%. Let me uncheck contrast only so we can see the original image. Now, I love this image, but it's a little too soft for my taste anyway. And I'd like to pull a little bit of contrast out, but I want to maintain that dreamy look. So let's turn it back on. 50% looks pretty good. Now we can give it more if we want to. But you notice, even if I take it the whole way up, we don't get any extra saturation, which is really nice. But I do want some con extra contrast in there. So I, you know what? 50% looks pretty good. And I think I, I might even go just a little more like... 53%. Here's the before and here's the after. Now, don't forget we have brightness and contrast. I'll work with that, those later if I think I need them. But now let's turn our attention to soft contrast. Now, remember, it's going to give us a nice, soft, contrasty look. It's going to give us really smooth transitions. So I can take the soft contrast and let's start to drag it to the right. I'll go the whole way so you can really see what it's doing. See that nice, soft, dreamy look now? I'm going to dial in what I think I want. And I think maybe around, you know, right around 49%. Here's the before and here's the after. And now looking at it, I think I might want some saturation. But the cool thing here is I can add as much or as little as I want. I can take more saturation out or I can add a little in. And I think I might add a little bit in, not too much right there let's see if i'm close to the saturation level i had here's the before and here is the after yeah i actually have less saturation than i originally had so again there's the before and there's the after so i might want to even pull up a little bit more and maybe right there i like that now if it's too light i can take the brightness and pull it back a little bit and i might do that just pull it back like minus 3%. And if we're blocking up any shadows, we can take the shadow slider and drag it to the right. You see, and I can, you know, open it up a little bit. And I may open it up, not too much, but just a little wee bit. And if the highlights are getting too light, I can take the highlight slider and let's drag it to the right and see what it does. You see that? Tone that back a little bit. Now, there's an opacity slider here that you can pull off the effect if you feel it's too strong like this, okay? I don't recommend that. I'm using this as a plugin for Photoshop, so I'll take care of all that in Photoshop, and I recommend that. Don't make your final result here. Wait till Photoshop because you can do some further tweaking there. So overall, let's take a look. Here is the before... And here's the after. Now, I hope this gives you a better understanding of what this contrast only filter is all about. For an image like this, where you want some extra contrast, but you don't want any extra saturation, this will help you immensely. And don't forget that soft contrast. If you have a nice dreamy image like this, you can maintain that dreamy look. And you could use this uh, filter also for just adding a soft contrast. Sometimes you don't need the contrast only slider, but you only need the soft contrast slider. So remember, it is in here. And that's all I'm doing today. So I'm going to click apply. That'll save it out back into Photoshop. Let me go ahead and next out of this tool here and make the image a little bit larger. And now let's take a look. Here is the before. Kind of hazy. Over hazy in my opinion, but now I think it really looks good. Let me know in the comments section below what you think of this contrast only filter. Do you think this will be an asset to your workflow? Let me know. I want to hear from you. And there you have it. Before we added the contrast only filter and now here is the after. I really love this result. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial today and I hope you have a better understanding of the contrast only filter. Next up will be the tonal contrast filter. So stay tuned. Hey, if you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. That way, every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. I want to thank each and every one of you out there for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.